Professor Alberto, I present yourself. Uh, Professor Alberto is a PhD in philosophy. His main research interests are in philosophy of religion, with a particular focus in on the classic conception of religion's faith. Uh, Professor Alberto, we have 20 minutes, okay, for your okay. speech, and for more uh, after that, uh, 10 minutes for discussions, okay. When you have uh, five minutes, I put uh, in the chat, okay? Yeah. Do you see the PowerPoint? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much for for your introduction and thank you all for coming for, for coming for attending to my talk. I will present a paper and tell it religious fictionalists and the ontological status of God. Well, fictionalist concepts of religious faith conceive of religious faith as engaging in a kind of understanding of the world akin to becoming immersed in a fictional story. In contrast with the traditional theist, who conceives of religious faith as necessarily involving propositional belief and reduces religious motivation to evidential terms, defenders of religious fictionalists deny that religious faith necessarily involves propositional belief and define religious motivation on pragmatic grounds as the kind of religious understanding of the world they claim the individual can voluntarily become immersed in, being the most adequate and beneficial way to inspire moral reflection, moving the individual thereby to a higher moral action, and therefore bringing the possibility on even that the kind of religious understanding of the the society religious fictionalist does not only attempt to preserve a religious way of life in its practical ethical sense, but it also aims to retain a non evidentially rounded practice of the world. Religious fictionalism is often considered as a recent development in the philosophy of religion. And until very recently, that religious fictionalism has, become, has been seriously and systematically considered in analytic philosophy, together with the fact that the main motivation behind defenders of religious fictionalism is often epistemological, has limited, I think, the kind of topics addressed when discussing religious fictionalism. My aim here in this talk is to try to enlarge the current philosophical debate on religious fictionalism by addressing the question of the ontological status of God in fictional terms. As far as I know, this is an erected question in the debate, with defenders of religious nationalism uh, being content to rely on the claim that God is a kind to a fictional character, understanding fictional character in rather an intuitive, non explicit, systematically and philosophically formulated way, and so failing to analyze in deep how we shall understand the notion of a fictional god, or more importantly, its philosophical implications when defending religious fictionalism as an equally religiously valid alternative to the traditional understanding of religious faith. More concretely, in this talk, I will argue that the main contrast between religious fictionalism and other recently developed fictionalist positions in other non-religious files of inquiry is the sort of personal and affective relationship said to be felt by the religious person between them and God the feeling of being in a personal and loving communion with God. From a theistic point of view, and especially from a Christian perspective, this is an important part of the early significance of religious faith, and so a considerable part of its pragmatic value. A theistic form of religious fictionalism then must target for the possibility of the notion of God, which is the communion with God. I would argue that a realist, non-Mengonian artifactual fictionalist understanding of God, along the lines that philosophers such as Schiffer, Thomason, and Bunny Barin have already defended on non-religious grounds with regard to fictional characters, or ordinary fictional characters, seems to be the most direct way of preserving the possibility of the religious person standing in an actual relation to God, without surrendering the fictionalist distinctive claim that religious faith is just a human product and that the kind of religious understanding of the world that religious faith involves is akin to becoming immersed in an imaginative exercise. Last, I will argue that despite allowing the possibility of the religious person understanding in an actual relation to God, this fictionalist understanding of God in realist artifactual terms fails to preserve a genuine personal relationship between the concrete religious person and God. 
Well, in recent years, some philosophers have defended fictionalist positions on other files of inquiry that are independent from religion. Those, for example, we can find illustrations of moral, mathematical, scientific, and modal fictionalism. Among fictionalist positions, the usual case is to consider the objective of inquiry, be it numbers, possible words, moral properties, and scientific. Fictionalists defend that despite insufficient evidence to affirm the existence of such objects, such as of inquiry, it is worthy that one acts as if they existed, so meanwhile, without affirming that they actually exist. And this is so because of the practical beneficial consequences that might be obtained from this acting as if a justice. Those, for example, defenders of mathematical fictionalists claim that mathematicians should not believe that numbers actually exist, but that the most adequate stance for them is to work as if numbers existed. This practice, the fictionalists say, is justified on pragmatic grounds because to work as if number, as if numbers, or as if numbers exist, might aid our understanding of the world, even if it is the case that in fact there are no numbers, and so that the statements involving numbers try to provide an actual description of how the world operates. Religious fictionalists take a similar view when defending their fictionalist notions of religious faith. The usual case among defenders of religious fictionalists is to justify the immersion in the kind of religious of efficient means to move the individual to higher moral action. Well, I think that religion might inspire the individual to a higher moral action, and I also agree that the individual does not need to take any religious or theological claim to actually be able to benefit from this inspiring faction. However, I think that this moral inspiring faction is not the whole story, but that something very important is lacking in contemporary fictionalist accounts of religious, of religious faith. Religion has a peculiarity that distinguishes it religion from these other fields of inquiry that have also received fictionalist interpretations. So there is an obvious and crucial difference, difference so, unfortunately, commonly neglected in contemporary fictionalist formulations of religious faith between the kind of relationship religious people think, feel there is between themselves and God, and say, for example, the kind of relationship that mathematicians feel there is between them and numbers. From a theistic point of view, religious faith properly involves the feeling of religious people being themselves in an affective and personal relationship with God, that is, the feeling of being in a loving and personal communion with him. Mathematicians, including robust mathematical realists, do not feel themselves in any kind of affective and personal relationship with numbers, and even least in a personal and loving communion with them. We might consider that numbers and their related properties might arouse emotions like admiration or puzzlement in the mathematician, but this just will be an emotional reaction to the part by the part uh, of the subject, and not the feeling of being in an affective and personal relationship with numbers. <coughs> As is well known, traditional theists <coughs> are guess, this experientially uh, felt affective relationship with God on propositional grounds, as it being the expression of a genuine connection with God. However, it is easy to see that the religious significance of this feeling is not, at least, not only propositional, but existential. Leaving aside the possibility of enjoying God's salvation, being in a personal The challenge for defenders of religious fictionalists is to present to preserve sorry this feeling of being in an affective relationship with God, and so its existential significance and its pragmatic value, without surrendering their distinctive claim that religious faith is simply a human product and that the kind of non-evidentially grounded but experientially felt religious understanding of the world that religious faith involves is akin to becoming immersed in an imaginative exercise. One of the main strengths of the position usually presented by defenders of religious fictionalism is that it succeeds in preserving the affective aspect of religion without thereby committing themselves to accepting that the factual claims made by religion are actually true. More concretely, they claim that a fictionalist understanding of religious faith allows for the possibility that religious stories arouse an emotional reaction in the individuals who become immersed in them without them having to believe these stories to be true or like characters to actually exist. This claim is usually presented by relying on analogy between religious stories and ordinary non-religious fictions. If a horror movie can scare us or a drama movie make us cry, then fiction says a fictional religious story involving God, Moses, the Virgin Mary, or 
you know, the, well, I have nothing to reject here since I think it's obvious that the fishing is dirty. When I raised it before, the challenge is not just to just an emotional reaction in the individuals who become invested in it, but rather to preserve the sort of love in a personal relationship that common religious people feel there is between them and God. Thereby also preserving the comfort that such a feeling of being accompanied carries with it. The question is not the fourth, whether one can feel worried, scared, intrigued, compassionate, and so on about a fictional character's fate, but is whether one can actually feel oneself as being in a personal and affective relationship with a fictional character. In other words, and this is what the relevance of the question for the ontological status of God relies on, the challenge for religious fictionalists, if they want to preserve this feeling of being in a personal relationship with God, which they think they should, is to offer a coherent notion of God which, despite being understood in fictional terms, allows those who become immersed in a fictional religion and standing of the world to conceive themselves as being engaged in this sort of felt relationship of personal and loving communion. Given that, according to religious fictionalists, God is relevantly akin to ordinary non-religious fictional characters, it seems that the reflection on this question might, at least to some extent, benefit from the ongoing but more established philosophical debate about the ontological status of fictional characters. Regarding the current philosophical debate over the ontological status of fictional characters, we can make a basic distinction between realist and non-realist positions by the obvious difference as to whether they conceive of fictional characters as them somehow actually existing or whether they overtly claim that fictional characters do not actually exist at all. There are, of course, differences in how these philosophers have to create their individual positions because not all realists claim fictional characters to exist in the same way. in the same time. But I would like to point out that Thomas and Van Imbagen have already defended on non-religious grounds with regards to fictional characters, and so independently of the cohency of religious fictionalism, seems to be the most direct way of preserving the possibility of the religious person standing in an actual relation to God, while also maintaining a fictionist understanding of religious faith. Leaving aside the peculiarities of each of their own formulations, the core claim made by the defenders of active factual release regarding fictional characters is that they conceive of fictional characters as actually existing as abstract cultural artifacts. Fictional characters are abstract in the sense of their being neither especially nor temporarily located, but as differing from platonic ideas in that, they, that in that they are not eternal and necessary existing objects that the author comes to know by means of discovery. Fictional characters are not discovered, but rather created by the authors of the fiction in which they feature, making their existence contingent in the sense that they depend on the contingent fact of the author or the authors having created them. The factual release then preserves the claim that fictions and the characters are purely contingent human products created at some concrete time by some concrete authors, while also preserving the patronist claim that fictional characters are actually existing as correct objects. Artifact releases, released, sorry, can readily accommodate the claim that a person might have loving feelings towards some given fictional character. These feelings will be simply the expression of a genuine connection with some given fictional object. If defenders of religious fictionalists were to conceive of God in these artifactual terms, then they will not only be able to preserve the experience of having such loving feelings, but they will also be able to claim, along the lines of traditional theories, that these feelings are in fact the expression of a genuine connection with God. Even thought, God will obviously be con not be conceived in the supernatural terms traditional theists do. But this understanding of God is not existing of so created abstract objects. Traditional is a way of preserving the practice of private prayer in a similar way to traditional theism. It is true that religious fictionalists cannot accommodate the practice of petitionary prayer for the obvious reason that the fictional god, even if constructed in the artifactual release terms that I am referring to here, lacks of the properties that are taken to ground the divine capacity to directly intervene in the uh, natural world. However, and in contrast to what is usual among the case among defenders of religious fictionalists, which is to reduce the practice of private prayer to a sort of imaginative and uh, morally inspiring exercise, to so conceive of God as an actually existing abstract object will preserve a fictionalist understanding of God while somehow retaining the traditional understanding of prayer as an attempt made by the religious person to reach an actual connection with God. 
considering of what in the aforementioned fictionaries release artifactual terms, then seems to allow the fictionaries to claim that the concrete person stands in an actual relation to God. However, even assuming artifactual release, the claim that one may be I hate that to have the properties that are taken to ground and so especially and temporarily located. Defenders of active factual theory have attempted to solve this difficulty regarding non binary, non religious fictional characters. Considering that some of these solutions do accept, then the religious fictionalist will be able to claim that the loving feelings towards God experienced by the concrete religious person is not just a purely subjective emotional relation on their part, but it is grounded in them being in an relation to God. However, we must remember that for the religious fictionalist, it's not just to preserve the loving feeling the concrete person has towards God, but to preserve in a very own way the sort of personal and effective relationship said to be felt by the religious person between them and God, the feeling of being in a loving and personal communion with God. Even considering that the artifactual fictional god might somehow have those properties that will ground the loving feelings of the concrete religious person towards God, this will be just halfway to claiming the possibility of the concrete religious person being in an actual loving and personal communion with God. In order to claim that there might be a personal, uh, a genuine personal relationship with the, between the concrete religious person and God, not, not only is it needed that God might be the cause of the loving feelings of the concrete person, but it must also be allowed that God might play an active role in that personal and sentimental relationship, just as the concrete person does. Now, the problem is that a fictional God conceived in the artifactual lines, lines or lineage simply does not seem to be the right kind of entity to be able to engage in a personal relationship. An artifact is not a, a, is a, human, sorry, is a humanly created abstract object, and so is not a person. It lacks of any intentionality on its own, and so it is incapable of loving. And thus, it cannot be an active part of any personal relationship with a concrete person. And so, after all, there is no possibility of there being a personal communion between the concrete religious person and such a fictional world. I emphasize that the problem here is conceptual, not just epistemological. This contrasts with the kind of difficulties that the traditional theist faces when claiming that there is a genuine, personal, and loving relationship between the concrete religious person and God. Since, according to traditional theist, God is conceived as a supernatural being who actually exists but is neither spatially nor, nor temporarily located, or at least not located in the same way as a concrete object like an individual concrete religious person is, the traditional theist faces a challenge of explaining how such a personal relationship occurs. Nonetheless, given that According to is then at least the rights of entity to engage in personal relationships, even if there is no clear explanation as to how personal. So, even considering that an artifact of fictionalist understanding of God might allow the concrete person to stand in actual relation to God, this kind of relation will not be, properly speaking, a genuine, that is, mutual, loving, and personal relationship. Conceiving God in the aforementioned and religious artifactual terms it to, seems to be a coherent position for the religious fictionalist, and in fact it appears to have some merits in its own right, but it also seems clear that the, so to speak, monadic relation with God that results from such conception fights to preserve the existential significance of the sort of personal and affective relationship said to be felt by the common religious person between them and God, which relies on its providing the concrete religious person with the comfort of being fortified and accompanied when facing the vicissitudes of life, be they joy or its misfortunes. And that's all. Thank you very much. Yeah. I have finished. Do you have it? Thank you. Thank you, Professor Alberto, for your speech. Uh, we have the time of questions now. Please, if you have any questions, you can have in writing or in, in voice. Professor, I, I start with uh, a question. Um, is uh, about the genuine personality relationship between the person and God. How you can have this kind of relationship? 
I have some hypotheses. My uh, main hypothesis is uh, that we need to conceive God as a person. What do you think about that? Yeah. The problem is that if it, I mean, we can say that uh, we can conceive it, uh, conceive God as a person, but this will make, make uh, the abstract, uh, the active fact of God a person. So maybe you can, inside the, in a religious socialist understanding of the world, you can engage in this kind of fictional feeling, fictionalist feeling of being in a loving or personal communion. But the point I was raising in the top in the in this talk was whether it was possible somehow in some way uh, by exploring the ontological uh, some 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 conception of God that that was compatible with the core claim of religious fictionalist to preserve a, a genuine relationship, not just the feeling of, being, you know. So maybe the, the religious fictionalist can just answer something like this. We conceive uh, God as fictionally as a person, but this won't show an actual relationship, which as was the point of my, well, an entire point of my talk. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Uh... Any more questions? <laughs>